this time. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning truly grateful for your goodness, for your kindness, for your mercy, and for your love. This is the day that you have made. We, your people, will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for another time and opportunity to gather in your name, not in a building, but we are still gathered together in your name, by your spirit, and around your word. We thank you for the opportunity to worship uh, and receive your word virtually through the internet. And we thank you, Father, for the time coming when we will soon gather together in person in your name. We pray right now, Father, that you would touch someone who is watching this broadcast, whether they watch it now live, whether they watch it later on Facebook or YouTube. We pray that you would meet them where they are at the point of their need, that you would touch, heal, deliver, save, and set free, moved by your power and answer prayer. We thank you, Father, and acknowledge you as the only true and living God, and we pray and invoke your holy presence now. We pray that you would come in the room wherever we are and meet us today. We love you. And we give your name the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning and God bless you. God bless you. Welcome to service this morning. We're so glad to connect with each and every one of you uh, as we gather in the name of the Lord. It's good to be in the service one more time. Amen. Amen. Uh, we, uh, at this time, as we are logging in still, we want to give you a moment. Uh, to greet your neighbor. So if you are here today watching this live broadcast, we want you to greet a neighbor. And, and by saying good morning, friendship, right there in the comments, text good morning. God bless you. Amen. Show some love to someone. Let's fellowship at this time. Tell someone good morning. And if you want to like someone's good morning comment to let them know you see them, go ahead and click like on their comment. Good morning. God bless you. Good morning, friendship. Let's show some love at this time. Oh, we are living, we are living. 
in these times, and we know that he is able to see us through. Hallelujah. We praise God for seeing another first Sunday in the year 2020, the first Sunday in May, and we will be observing communion this Sunday. And so uh, we want to make sure that you have your elements for you. As we get to the climax uh, 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 of our service, make sure you have your elements secure. That's your bread. You can use bread, cracker. And if you have grape juice or fruit of the vine, you can do that. If not, you can get some water. We're going to pray over it and consecrate it together. And we will do that after the message toward the climax of our service. However, we will now sing our communion hymn, There is a fountain filled with blood. Thank you, Jesus.
We have had a meeting uh, of our church leaders. I want to thank all of our leaders, deacons, trustees, and officers uh, for teleconferencing in on Thursday so that we can begin to discuss our plans uh, for reopening. But we will proceed with all caution. So we will not open just because the state is reopening. But we will serve you notice for how uh, we will begin to uh, phase in uh, when we uh, open eventually. In the meantime, we thank God for these venues where we can continue to uh, come together to worship and uh, to receive God's word. And so this, again, this Tuesday night, we will have Tuesday night prayer through our teleconference line. We have Wednesday night Bible study on Facebook Live and YouTube. And for our offering, we have two giving options. And we want to thank you, friendship members uh, and friends, uh, for your faithful giving. We ask that you continue uh, with your tithing and your giving. Uh, we have two options for you to do so. Um, uh, we have the Givelify, and the link to Givelify uh, is should, is there in the description. You can click on uh, Givelify, or you can go to our church's webpage, www.friendshipnbc.net. And go to the offering tab, and there you will see the link to Givelify. Uh, if you're going straight to the app, make sure that you are going to Friendship Baptist Church of Hamden. You'll see my picture and the picture of the church and the church's van. And so that is where uh, you will designate your giving. It's very easy to set up a Givelify account. It's easier than starting a Facebook account. And so you can go there if you want to give electronically, or you can um, give through U.S. Mail. You can mail a check or money order to, to Friendship Baptist Church, Attention Trustee Ministry. P.O. Box 6422, Hamden, Connecticut, 06517. Again, that's Friendship Baptist Church, Attention Trustee Ministry, P.O. Box 6422, Hamden, Connecticut, 06517. Now, I have another exciting announcement. Uh, we are in the month of May, and the third Sunday of May, every year we celebrate our church anniversary. Praise the Lord. And so, uh, this year is our 56th church anniversary. All right, if you are excited, thank God for this church. I want you to write 56 in the comments. Put 56, 5, 6 in the comments. All right, this is our 56th church anniversary. And uh, we know that we have many things planned uh, for this month to celebrate our church's anniversary uh, that we are no longer able to do. But we still have an option for you to give a pledge toward the church anniversary. So if you go to GiveLify, our church treasurer, Sister Tiffany Penn, who's been very uh, faithful to her, her task, has created a, a pledge option. So you can go there, and it says church anniversary of pledge. You can go there and pay a pledge separate from your tithes and offering. And we know that our church anniversary funds go to our building and grounds maintenance and upkeep. And so uh, we ask that if you have not, if you did not before the pandemic, please uh, still uh, remit your church anniversary pledge. Again, you can do that through GiveLify on the pledge option, or you can, again, write in a check and make sure that you, uh, on the check, that you are writing um, church anniversary in the memo, church anniversary pledge in the memo. Amen. God bless you. All right. Uh, as I share with you every week, we have so many reasons to remain before the Lord in prayer. We want to continue to pray for Sister Tiffany Penn and the Hatley family and the transition of Mr. Irvin Hatley. Uh, we also want to pray for our very own Associate Minister, Reverend Daniel Cohen, and the passing of his mother. Let's keep him in prayer uh, along with his uh, family and uh, his mother's, uh, his dear mother's friends. Let's keep them all in prayer. We also want to be in prayer for uh, Deacon Charles Smith, who was also my cousin, uh, Deacon Charles Smith of the Morning Star Church uh, went on to his reward yesterday. So we ask that you would please keep him and uh, the, the family in prayer. And we want to pray for all of those who are sick in the bereavement. And again, we want to pray for our government, for our leaders, for the state and federal level, uh, that the Lord would crown them with wisdom and that he would crown our scientists and public health specialists with knowledge and uh, leading us through this pandemic. Again, I want to remind you that we will be taking communion at the conclusion of the message today, so make sure that you have your bread or your crackers secured, and make sure that you have some juice. You can use any kind of fruit juice uh, or get some water, and we will pray over it. Don't get Pepsi Cola for communion. Amen. <laughs> get some juice, some fruit juice or some water, and we will pray over it together as we go into the Lord's Supper. Amen. Just before we go into our message, I want to sing a little bit of this worship song. We want you to worship with me because we know that we serve a mighty God, a holy God, an awesome God who is able to do anything but fail. There's no failure in him.
So we want to sing about how God is able. So please join in with me. But just before we do that, we also are aware that we are in the month of May. The Lord has blessed us to see a new month, a new day, and this year, the month of May. And so uh, we want to celebrate all May babies, including Sister Deborah Lyons, whose birthday is today. And so we want you to do this. If you are watching this broadcast and you were born in the month of May, I want you to write in the comments, I am a May baby. I am a May baby. And if you are a May baby, if you write that there, if you see someone writing that, will you click a like or a love to show them some love for their birthday? And let us all sing to them together at this time. Happy birthday. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
Depression is indeed common. In fact, depression has been called the common code of mental illness because all of us have been depressed at some time or another. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, everyone occasionally feels blue or sad, but these feelings are usually short-lived and pass within a couple of days. In severe instances, depression, however, may last for months or years. When you have depression, it interferes with daily life because uh, 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 it causes pain for both you and those who care about you. Depression is a common, but it's a serious illness. And beloved, depression does not escape us in the body of Christ. Yes, even we who have been born again, free from sin, watching the blood of the Lamb, have our low moments from time to time. This is particularly, particularly true in this season where we are sheltering in place during a pandemic. I believe COVID depression will emerge as a unique uh, 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 set of uh, responses to what is going on uh, uh, that is affecting our mental health. Uh, COVID depression comes with the fact that many are struggling with sickness. Many of us are dealing with grief and multiple losses at a time. Many of us have uh, uh, issues and depressions dealing with the loss of income. Many of us are depressed because of loss of plans. There are people who would have been, who were planning to be married during the pandemic or there were people who were planning retirement parties or vacations, or many of us are spending our birthdays with, uh, uh, without having a party or fellowshipping with our loved ones. And so all these things can come at us and cause uh, depression. And in uh, uh, general, beyond this, there's just a general sense of loss or missing out on life. But we must be careful to not let these moments of depression linger too long. Because if we stay down too long, if we stay depressed too long, depression can become a stronghold and become detrimental to our existence. In our text for today, we see just how Elijah, God's prophet, wrestled with depression and how he uh, was able to work through it and continue to function uh, in accordance with the will of God. And the text, if we find prophet Elijah in the text in 1 Kings chapter 19, we must be aware that in the previous chapter, chapter 18, uh, uh, he has just had a great victory and a tremendous triumph. Chapter 18, uh, uh, it details the events of the showdown on Mount Moriah where uh, uh, Elijah, a lone prophet of God, challenged the 400 prophets of Baal, Baal an idol god that the people of Israel were encouraged to worship under the influence of their king Ahab and his wife Jezebel. The challenge was that both uh, Elijah and the prophets of Baal would pray and build sacrifices to their respective gods. And whoever, uh, whose God consumed the sacrifice by fire was the true and living God. And the one whose God uh, 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 did not answer by fire, that prophet or prophets would be put to death. The Bible says that the prophets of Baal went first and the 400 prophets of Baal made their sacrifice to God and absolutely nothing happened. They danced for hours and even began to cut themselves, but nothing happened. Baal did not answer their sacrifice or receive their offering. However, when Elijah uh, got ready to offer his sacrifice to the true and living God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the Alpha and Omega, the one who was and is the who is to come. The Bible says that when he built his altar and made his sacrifice, uh, not only did he uh, 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 build an altar, but he drenched it in water. Don't forget that the God who's the true and living God is supposed to answer by fire. And so he drenched it with water. Now you don't have to have received an A plus in physics to know that anything that's drenched in water is not supposed to catch on fire. Yet when Elijah prayed to the true and living God, God answered his sacrifice and defied physics and created a miracle by consuming the offering of sacrifice with fire. Therefore, Elijah established that he served the true and living God. And how many know that we still serve a God who answers by fire? We still serve a God who can come to a, a, an impossible circumstance and work a miracle and show himself mighty and strong to all the doubters and unbelievers. Uh, the Bible says that, that uh, 
these great things happen, and, and, and all of this is necessary for me to share with you, beloved, because you need to understand it is after this very high moment in ministry that Elijah then descends into a season of despair. By the time we get to the first two verses of the very next chapter, 1 Kings 19, uh, 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 we find him getting ready to go into a deep depression. Why? Because uh, uh, when King Ahab, who was present at the showdown at Mount Moriah, went home to his wife Jezebel and told her everything that happened and how all of Baal's prophets had been killed, uh, she was incensed and outraged by what happened. And so she sent a messenger to Elijah and said to Elijah, so let the gods do to me and more also if I don't make your life as one of Baal's prophets by tomorrow about this time. Seeing this message, the Bible says that Elijah took off, ran for his life. He went to Beersheba and left the uh, 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 and left his servant there. Then he traveled by himself a day's journey into the wilderness, and he sat down under a juniper tree or a broom tree, and he began to pray and ask God to take his life. He says in verse 4, It is enough, Lord. Take my life, for I'm no better than my father's. Then he laid down under the tree as if he was waiting to die. But the Bible says suddenly an angel touched him and told him to arise and eat. And he looked and uh, there by his head was a cake on the coals and a jar of water. And so he ate it and drank it. But then he lied down again still trying to die. But verse 7 uh, 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 of the Bible says that the angel came back, struck him a second time, told him, arise and eat for the journey is too great for you. And so he arose and ate and drank again. But this time he went in the strength of that food, not eating for 40 days and 40 nights. And he traveled as far as Mount Horeb. And there in a the cave, he spent the night. And the word of the Lord found him in the cave. Aren't you glad that even though we're sheltering in, the, in place, that the word of the Lord can still find us in the cave? The Bible says that the word of the Lord found him in the cave in Mount Horeb and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? Then Elijah lamented to the Lord and said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant. They've torn down your altars. They've killed all your prophets with the sword. And I'm the only one left. And now they're trying to kill me, God. As we skip down to verses 15 through 18 of the text, the Lord's ultimate response to Elijah is this. He says, Elijah, go. Return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Hazael as king of Syria. Then anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king over Israel, and anoint uh, uh, Elisha as a prophet to stand in your place. It shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Hazel, Jehu will kill, and whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. Yet you need to know this, Elijah, you not by yourself. I have 7,000 knees in Israel that have not bowed to Baal, and not every mouth has kissed him. So there's two questions that I want us to address today in this reflection. Uh, uh, the first question is this. What are the signs that Elijah was depressed? I have made the claim that Elijah here wrestles with depression and works through it. And so we need to demonstrate that Elijah was indeed depressed. But then secondly, how did Elijah work through his depression? How did Elijah work through his depression? And then by application, what are some things that we can do to work through depression when we're feeling a bit blue during this shelter in place and a, a COVID season, all right? So first question, what are the signs that Elijah was depressed? Well, number one, he abandoned his responsibilities. The Bible says in 1 Kings 19 verses 1 and 2 that when uh, uh, Jezebel sent him this message saying, uh, I'm going to kill you by this time tomorrow, that he just, he gets up, gets his servant, goes to the wilderness, leaves his wilderness and goes a further, another day's journey. And he just takes off and he stays there. And then he's there for another 40 days and then he ends up at Mount Horeb. But he leaves his responsibility. What was his responsibility? God had raised him up as a prophet in Israel. If you're familiar with the Old Testament prophetic tradition, you know that for every king, God raised a prophet to speak truth to power. So in 1 Samuel, uh, 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 we see Samuel being the prophet to Saul. 
By the time we get to uh, 2 Samuel 12, we see Nathan being the prophet to David. And so Elijah's assignment, his obligation, his responsibility was to be the prophet to Ahab because Ahab had turned the people toward evil, being influenced by his wife. And so God raised him up to be his voice. Yet, with the threat of uh, 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 Jezebel taking his life, he abdicates his responsibilities and leaves. That's another sign of responsibility. But the unique situation for us is that we did not leave our responsibilities. We had to step away from them as we shelter in place. And so perhaps many of us are dealing with depression because we miss our obligations. We miss the responsibilities and the things that we used to do in our day-to-day -day life. All right? Another sign of depression is solitude. All right. Uh, in verse three, again, after Je getting Jezebel's threat, Elijah took off, went to Beersheba, and he had a servant with him initially. But once he got to Beersheba, he told the servant, you stay here. And he journeys a day by himself into a wilderness and he sat under a juniper tree. All right. And so he, he's all by himself. And so why is, why is solitude very often a sign of depression? Well, sometimes it indicates that we're undeserve, we feel undeserving of company. Or we feel no one understands what we're going through. Or we feel there's no one who can help us. And again, what's unique about this, this coronavirus pandemic and this particular season of sheltering in place is that many of us are by ourselves, not of our own volition, but perhaps we live by ourselves. Or perhaps we've tested positive and we have to quarantine by ourselves. And so we find ourselves by ourselves and that might then be igniting a bit of depression in us. Are y'all still with me? Another sign of his depression is that he's sleeping all the time. He's sleeping all the time. Uh, 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 and that's a classic sign of depression uh, when people are trying to sleep their troubles away. Verse 5 of the text says, uh, this is after he leaves his servant, he's a, a, a day's journey into the wilderness, then he falls asleep under a broom tree, a juniper tree. And then the angel has to wake him up, says, arise and eat. Then he looks and he sees uh, a cake and there's water. He eats it and he drinks it. But then, at the end of verse 6, it says, he lays down again and the angel has to wake him up a second time. And so he's trying to sleep his troubles away. That's another classic sign of depression when people are sleeping all the time. And again, what's unique about the corona pandemic is that many of us uh, uh, who are not essential workers, if you're not careful, you will find yourself sleeping more than you should. A lot of, many Americans right now, our sleep patterns are off because you don't have to get up at 6, 7, 8 o'clock to fulfill your daily obligations. Or perhaps because we are upset or because we are depressed that we can't go out, we're sleeping too much. And so sleep is another sign of depression. Then number four, another sign of depression, uh, uh, is that uh, Elijah refused to eat. Again in verse five, when the angel wakes him up as he lies down under the juniper tree sleeping, the angel says, get up and eat. And supernaturally, God makes it so that there is a baked cake and there is a jar of water for him to drink. He eats it and drinks it, but then he lays down. And so a second time, the angel has to remind him to eat, and God provides for him to eat again. But then the Bible says that he went 40 days and 40 nights on that food. And so the angel has to remind him to eat twice and brings him food supernaturally so that he does not die. But then it says he went 40 days and 40 nights without food. Know that the Bible does not say that he was fasting. He simply was not eating because he was depressed. And so how we manage food is another indicator of depression. And the pendulum can sw swing in two extremes. It could be that you're not eating, or it could be that you're eating too much because you're eating your feeling. That's another thing that can happen to us in this particular season of sheltering in place. But then, verse 5, he got so depressed uh, that he wanted to die. And that's another sign of depression, uh, being suicidal. It says in verse 4, uh, uh, he went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came sat under a juniper tree, and he prayed that he might die and said, Lord, it's enough. Take my life. I'm no better than my father. And that is the place, beloved, that we do not want to get to. And if you are already there, we thank God that in the word, we see how we can come back from depression. And if you're fighting from getting there, we see tools for how we can fight back from depression. When we see what happens with Elijah, how did Elijah work through his depression? Number one, he kept on talking to God. He kept on talking to God. If you're going to work through depression, you've got to keep on talking to God. And we see that in the text because even though Elijah did 
lot of things wrong. He abandoned his post as a prophet. He took off and he stopped eating and he's asking the Lord to die. Uh, note that all throughout this, he's still talking to God. Now, what he says to God isn't pretty. It isn't flowery. We can't put it in a Hallmark card. He says, Lord, I want to die. He says, Lord, they killed all the prophets, and now they're trying to kill me, and I'm just trying to do right, and I'm the only one left. It's not pretty, but he keeps talking to God. And beloved, no matter what you're going through in this season, no matter how you're feeling, keep on talking to God. There are some who say you, you shouldn't question God. I don't believe that. I believe that God is big enough for our questions. And it's better to question God than to stop talking to God. Because as long as you're questioning to God, you're still talking to God. And I serve a God you can ask questions to because he has all the answers. Whatever you do, no matter how bad it gets, keep on talking to God. Tell your neighbor in the comments, keep on talking to God. Keep on talking to God. The second thing Elijah did to work through his depression is... Uh, he got perspective about his situation. He got perspective about his situation. The Bible says that when he was in the wilderness and went there a day's journey, sat under a juniper tree and started saying to the Lord, Lord, it's enough. Take my life. I'm ready to die. I'm no better than my father's. Then go down to verse 10. It says, I've been zealous for you, Lord. I've done what you told me to do. The children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, tore down your altars, killed your prophets with the sword. I'm the only one left. They're trying to take my life. And so what he thought here is, is when he says, I'm no better than my fathers, he said, well, they killed all the other prophets of God. And he says, I'm just like them, so what's going to stop Jezebel from killing me? But this is the thing. Elijah does not die like the other prophets die. And what happened to Elijah... Or what happened to the other prophets does not happen to Elijah. And you need to know right where you are, beloved, that just because it happened to them doesn't mean it's going to happen to you. God has preserved you for a reason. Just because they're grieving don't mean you're going to grieve like they grieve. Just because they're going through don't mean you're going to go through like they went through. You may grieve, but you may, you may, you're not going to grieve like they're going to grieve. The way that, that people go through storms and suffer, that's not necessarily going to be how you suffer. God has different ways of dealing with us. And God preserved Elijah for a reason, and he's preserving you for a reason. And, and, and so God tells him when we get down to verse 18, after he's complaining, God, kill me. God, take my life. They're trying to get me. I've been trying to do right. I'm the zealous prophet. I'm the only one that's left. I'm the only one trying to do right. God says to him in verse 18, this is the Bellamy version of the, of the Bible. He says, child, please. He says, I have 7,000 knees I have reserved in myself that have not bowed to Baal. And so what happens to Elijah to get him out of his depression is that he gets perspective about his situation. What are you talking about, Pastor? He has very myopic focus. All he can think about is himself. And woe is me. And I'm so sad. And this is happening. And they're trying to kill me. And Jezebel doesn't like me. Me, me, me. God says, it's not about you. I have 7,000 needs. I have other people praying. I have other prophets. You need to broaden your perspective. Don't see what you see. I want you to see like I see. You are not the only one. So instead of being afraid, just thank me for what I'm doing in your life right now. He got perspective about his situation. Okay? So he's working his way through depression. He keeps talking to God. God gives him perspective on his situation. Then number three, he took the focus off himself and placed it back on God. He took the focus off himself and placed it back on God. Again, verse 10, he's saying to the Lord, I have been very zealous for the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel, taking your statue, taking down your covenant, torn down your, uh, 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 forsaking your covenant, torn down your altars, kill your prophets with the sword. I'm the only one left. Now they're trying to kill me. Verse 18, God says, no, 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 no. Yet I have reserved 7,000 these in Israel that have not bowed to Baal. And so what's going on is in his myopia, his small focus or his focus on himself, his insular focus. Elijah made what he feared bigger than God. Think about this. The same God that just answered a watery sacrifice by fire. It's the same God who's able to keep him and preserve him from Jezebel. Yet it's Jezebel's threat that he magnifies and then he responds to that for the rest of chapter 19. Beloved, we're going to always get Jezebel messages. We're going to always get Jezebel threats. There's going to always be Jezebel news reports. 
We have to be able to hear the report, but say, no, my God is bigger. My God is greater. My God is stronger. My God is so great that there's still 7,000 knees that have not bowed to Baal. There's still other people who are holding out and holding on and trusting in him. And so Elijah had to learn that this was not about him, that this was about God. That's what God essentially says to him. Elijah, I thought you were working for me. I thought you were letting me use you. I thought you were working for my glory, and you're all upset about yourself and what they're going to do to you. This ain't about you, Elijah. This is about me. I'm God, and I have a plan. And so, beloved, in this season, we have to take the focus off of ourselves and say, I'm so sad, I can't go on my vacation, or I can't do this, or I can't do that. Uh, uh, and we have to look beyond ourselves and see God and say, God, what is your plan for me? What is your plan with this situation? How can you use me in this particular season? Uh, and, and, and what would you have me to do after this? What lesson do you want me to take after this? Because there shall be glory after this. What do you want me to take from this? Take the focus off of yourself and place it back on God. Then another thing that Elijah does is he stopped giving airtime to his problem. That's number four. He stopped giving airtime to his problem. Elijah became depressed by replaying the message and the possibilities of the outcome. How do we know that? He gets this message from Jezebel. This time tomorrow, you're going to be like the rest of the prophets. I'm coming to take your life. And then he takes off and leaves. He goes to the wilderness of Damascus, goes to Beersheba, leaves his servant there, goes to the wilderness of Damascus. He ends up 40 days later in a cave in Mount Horeb. And when God comes to him in Mount Horeb, 40 days later, he's still replaying the message. Jezebel has taken my life. So all this time he's replaying the message, replaying the negativity, replaying all the hurt, replaying all the pain. And so God says to him, when he comes to him in verse 18, he says, no, nope, I got other plans for you. He says in verse 17, these are the plans. I want you to go back. I want you to anoint this one. I want you to set up this one. I want you to go back to work and know that I have 7,000 knees that have not bowed to Baal. In other words, he says, I want you to get back on task and stop sitting here in this dark cave, hungry and not eating, and replaying the same problems over and over again. Stop giving airtime to your problems. And beloved, that's what we're going to have to do in this season. I've been saying to you from the beginning, you don't need to sit there and watch the news cycle 24-7. You need to know of just enough to know that what's going on for the day. And then you have to live your life in your house or walking around the block or going in as an essential worker, whatever you're doing. you got to stop giving airtime to your problems and you need to focus on God. Because I want you to know that when Elijah complains to God, and you can read 1 Kings 19 in its entirety for yourself. When Elijah complains to God, God never addresses his complaint. God never replays with him or rewatches with him Jezebel's message. He doesn't even respond to it. He dismisses it. And that's what we're going to have to do with Jezebel messages or those messages that come to take our peace and our joy and, 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 and rob us of what God intended for us. And that is to have a good mental health and a healthy life. And so, beloved, how does Elijah fight through depression? He keeps talking to God. He gets perspective about his situation. He took the focus off himself, placed it back on God. He stopped giving airtime to his problems. But ultimately, he returned back to his assignment and his purpose and doing what the Lord told him to do. God gave him an assignment. He says to him in verses 16 and 17, I want you to go back. I want you to anoint Jehu. I want you to anoint Haziel. I want you to anoint Elisha. And they have their particular assignments. This is the job that I'm giving you. I want you to go back and do that. And know that I have 7,000 Eve that have, have not bowed to Baal. Then we get to verse 19. It says that Elijah then departed from Mount Horab. He came back and found Elijah, who was plowing 12 uh, uh, yoke of oxen before him. And uh, then he went to Elisha and threw his mantle onto him. And so he then took on the obligation of training Elijah as a mentor. So what are we saying here? The way he came out of depression is he went back to his assignment. Now, some of you may be saying, well, pastor, we're still sheltering in place. I can't just go back to doing what I was doing. No, you can't go back to doing what you were doing. But what we can do is, like Elijah, seek God and ask him, what will he have us to do right now in the time being? Because there is something that God can use you to do even as you are sheltering in place. And so uh, what we have to realize is that even now, I still have a purpose. I may not understand all that's going on, but God has a purpose, and I'm in his plan. 
And so while you are here and while you have this time to shelter in place, why don't you pray about your life goals? Why don't you pray about what you want to do when you get out of here? You got the internet at your disposal. Look up some places you want to travel when things get better. Look up some certifications you might want to get. Look at some other ways that you can retire. Look at some other things that you can do. Some of you might want to write a book or write some things. You want to create some things. Now you got the time to do it. What you have to do is continue to walk on your purpose even here. Know that Elijah didn't begin to walk in his purpose uh, when he got back to uh, 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 Beersheba or when he got back to Elijah. He began to walk in his purpose in the cave when he stood up and made movements toward a better life. And that's what you have to do today, even in the cave of your bedroom, your living room, your bathroom, your kitchen. Get up and decide that your life has purpose, that God has purpose for you in a plan, and that there shall be glory after this pandemic. And you begin to walk right now into your purpose and think about the things that you are going to be doing because God has more in store. And so what Elijah did in order to get through his depression is he had to get up, get over it, and get to work because he knew that God's got more. And that's the message to you today, beloved. You're going to have to get up, get over it, get to work because God's got more. I know we're having a difficult time, but you got to get up, get over it, get to work because God's got more. I know we've had to cry sometime, but that's all right. We have to get up. Move on from it. Get to work because God's got more. I know many of us are grieving and we're going through right now and we have unexpected losses. But there is a bomb in Gilead who has the power to help you to make it through. And he can give you the strength. I'm a living witness. He can give you the strength because God's got more in store. And I don't know about you, but I believe that God has more in store for me. And that, that my story will continue after this. And that there shall be glory after this. God's got more for me, more blessing, more healing, more promotion, a, 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 a more joy, more peace. If you believe God's got more, type in the comments, God's got more. Tell your neighbor God's got more. And that's why I'm not going to wallow in depression. That's why I'm not going to feel bad about myself. That's, not why, that's why I'm not going to sleep 18 hours or stop eating or eat too much. I'm not going to be depressed because I know that this is just a season and this too shall come to pass. This season won't last always. Seasons come and seasons go, but the word of God is eternal, and I'm excited about what God has next because I'm trusting him, I'm leaning on him, I'm depending on him, and I'm taking him at his word. God's got more, and I want to remind you before we take the Lord's Supper that we serve a great God who gave his son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. He bled, suffered, and died, was buried in a borrowed tomb. He was buried and stayed dead on Friday, stayed dead on Saturday, but early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands, and I got news for you. Jesus did not go to Calvary to die on the cross for us to believe that we don't have any hope. Jesus did not die on the cross for us to believe that our story is over. Jesus did not die on the cross for us to be depressed. But if Jesus could die and rise with all power in his hand, you got to know that your Sunday morning is coming and great things are ahead. God's got more in store. So don't lay down in depression, but you got to fight the good fight of faith. When bad news comes, fight the good fight of faith. When, when, when you feel those depressing moments, fight the good fight of faith. When you don't feel like getting out of bed, get up anyway. Make some eggs and bacon and drink some coffee and call somebody on the telephone and get in your word. Fight the good fight of faith because this is just a season. God's got more. God's got more. God's got more. And God's got greater. Greater is coming and better days are coming. If you believe it, give God the praise. Say hallelujah. 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 God's got more. God's got more. God's got more. All we have to do is wait on him. Trust him and take him at his word. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. At this time, we want to do a few things. First, we want to extend an invitation. Amen. If you're watching this broadcast and uh, you don't know Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sins, and you want some help with depression, uh, I want to tell you that it starts with knowing Jesus. It starts with knowing Jesus. And so if you're watching this broadcast, you can receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, which means you can be saved. But the Bible tells us in Romans 10, 8 through 10, the word is nearest even in our mouth, that if we will confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart uh, that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. 
For with the heart one believes, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And so if you are watching this broadcast and you have never made a public profession of your faith, I want you to know that if you believe in Jesus, you are halfway there. If you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God who died on the cross for our sins, for all who will believe, you are halfway there. But what you must next do is tell somebody that you believe. You must make a public profession of your faith. And so that's what we're inviting you to do today. And so if you feel that today is your day to be saved and you are ready, we want to lead you through this prayer. We want you to pray, uh, repeat after me. If, this, if you've not been saved, uh, pray after me and repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I give you praise and acknowledge you as the only wise God. I confess to you now that I am a sinner in need of salvation. I believe in my heart that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. And through my faith, by your grace, by my confession, I believe you are saving me right now. Come into my heart. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Live in me and use me all the days of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And if that's your first time praying that prayer, we want to invite you to make a public profession. You can write right there in the comments and say, I'm saved today. The Lord saved me today. If this is your first time, you can say, praying that prayer. Let us know, say, the Lord saved me today. The Lord saved me today. Beyond this, if you're looking for a church home, you don't have to look any further. Uh, 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 we will gladly receive you as a member of the Friendship Church. You do not have to wait until the end of the corona pandemic. You can join this church right now. If you would like to become a member, just write in the comments, I would like to become a member. Right? I would like to become a member. And if you write that, we will be in touch with you on uh, this day, this week. Uh, giving you information for how you can become a member of the Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. Hallelujah. We love you and God bless you. Hallelujah. We see someone saying, the Lord saved me today. Hallelujah. Praise God for salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. At this time, we want to go into our altar prayer before we receive the Lord's Supper. We want to go into our altar prayer. There's a need in your life or the life of someone you love right now. I want you to bring that to the fore. Uh, and we're going to go into prayer. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you want to call out a name in your space right now, call out their name as we go into prayer. Or a situation, call it out as we go into prayer. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Heavenly Father, Holy Father, our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name. Let your kingdom come and your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all that is evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. We thank you, Father, for being good to us and for being God to us. For being God to us and for being good to us. Great is your grace and great is your mercy and miraculous is your favor. You are the only wise God, and beside you there is no other. And we thank you right now, Father, for the power to fight through depression. Someone is depressed, might have been wrestling with depression right now. Someone is depressed right now. But right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the tools to fight depression. We thank you, Father, for helping us, God, uh, uh, to keep talking to you. Help us to get a, a, a good perspective on our issues. Help us to see what you would have us to see. Father, help us, Father, uh, to see what you would have us to see about our situation. And help us to get up and to move on and do all the things that you would have us to do. Not after the pandemic, but even now, Father, show us some steps we can make to continue to be productive for the cause of your Christ and your kingdom and for your purpose in our lives. Right now, Heavenly Father, we pray, Father, for those who are watching this broadcast. You know what their needs are. Well, some stand in one need of one thing, some stand in need of another. But whatever the need, Father, you know all about it. 
we know you are God who answers prayer. You are prayer answering God. Your word says that while we are calling, you are already answering. So we thank you, Father, for hearing and answering prayer, answering prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. We lift up, Father, Sister Tiffany Penn, God, and the Hatley family. We pray that you would continue to strengthen them, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We lift up Reverend Daniel Cohen and his family. We pray that you would continue to strengthen them, Father, in the name of Jesus. We lift up the, uh, uh, the uh, Bishop Charles and Zeddy Bell Smith family and the extended Smith family, Father. And we pray that you will strengthen them, God, in the mighty name of Jesus and take us through. We know you are able, God. And all of those who are in bereavement right now, wherever they are, Father, we thank you for touching and strengthening them and drawing them close to the love of, and knowledge, saving knowledge of your son, Jesus Christ, Father. We thank you for those who are watching this broadcast, for those who have professed salvation and those who would unite with us, Father. And we ask that you would touch them where they are, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for being our healer, God. There are some who are standing in need of a healing, and you know all about it. We thank you for being the healer. We lift up Henry Scott, Father. We lift up Mother Shirley Townsend, Father. We lift up uh, uh, Sister uh, Anna Coleman, Father. Uh, uh, and we thank you, Father, for uh, being with them and healing in the name, in the mighty name of Jesus. We know you are able. There's nothing too hard for you, God. We thank you, Father, for how you are uh, ever-present help in the time of trouble. And even in this time of pandemic, we thank you for meeting needs, Father. It's the beginning of the month and someone has already ran out, God. But we know, Father, that you have an endless supply. You own the cattle on a thousand of hills. And we thank you right now, Father, for making a way and meeting the needs, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray over relationships, Father, uh, for any confusion that might be caused during this time of shelter in place where people uh, can't be where they want to be or where people are stuck where they don't want to be and where, they, where the enemy's trying to get in and mess up communication. We thank you right now, Father, for moving in relationships, Father, in the name of Jesus, bringing clarity and insight, Father, and adding grace to our tongue, Father, even in how we make exchanges with people. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for our church family as a whole and all of our friends who are watching. And we ask that you would bless their socks off right now, God, that you would protect us and keep us in your care. We pray for essential workers, Father, in the hospitals, in the prisons, in the stores, in the banks, and uh, in sanitation, in government, the post office, police officers, fire personnel, wherever they are, God, the military, uh, government leaders, we thank you for having mercy on them, protecting them, and keeping them safe, Father. Uh, we pray for our leaders, pray for our governor, pray for our president, that you would save him and touch and regulate his mind, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father, for crowning our leadership even with wisdom and how to lead us through the pandemic. We pray, Father, for the scientists and the public health, and we thank you for their gift of knowledge, and we thank you for giving them knowledge, Father, uh, uh, as they come up with solutions, divine solutions uh, that are ordered by your uh, steps, God, uh, to see us through this pandemic. And we just love you, and we trust you, and we're counting on you, depending on you, and we have faith, and we are excited about what's to come. We know by faith, Heavenly Father, that what is coming is better than what's been. There shall be glory after this, because you have more in store for us, greater in store for us, and we give your holy name the praise. Come on right where you are, watching this in the kitchen, in the living room, the bedroom, the bathroom, the porch on your job. Just begin to give God the praise. Hallelujah. 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 We praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 this time I want to invite you to prepare to receive the Lord's Supper. Let's prepare to receive the Lord's Supper at this time. Hallelujah. I want to invite you to get your bread, your cracker, whatever that you have that's going to represent the Lord's body. Then uh, get your cup of fruit juice. If you have green juice, that's fine. Get your cup of fruit juice or water. And we're going to first go through our Lord's Supper affirmation. Then we're going to pray over our elements. As we come before the Lord's table, let us come 
with a spirit of humility and tenderness. Compassionate God, have mercy on us, we pray. Let us examine our thoughts, our actions, our motives, and our attitudes toward others. O oh, holy God, have mercy on us and forgive us our shortcomings. As we eat this bread which represents your body, open our eyes to the intimacy that you yearn to share with us. O oh, loving God, teach us to love you above all else. As we drink this cup which represents Christ's blood shed for us, we thank you for the new covenant love one another which is written on our hearts let us rejoice because our names are written in heaven heavenly father may your great sacrifice of redeeming love renew us for loving service and sacrifice for others may this cup this lord's supper energize every area of our lives and enable us to transcend our circumstances our shortcomings and our enemies lord touch and empower us that our lives may be renewed we praise you, O God, who made us your own people through the death and resurrection of your only begotten Son. We praise and glorify your holy and righteous name. I want you to now take your bread and your cup, and we're going to pray over it together. Heavenly Father, we come to you another first Sunday of the month of May, where we can gather virtually to receive your supper. We thank you so much, Father, for giving us your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. We thank you for his body and his blood. We thank you that he took our place on the cross to pay the penalty of our sins so that we might be forgiven, that our sins might be washed away by his blood, and that we might become your children and have relationship with you, have abundant life as your witnesses on earth, and eternal life as we reign with you in heaven. We pray now that you would touch the various elements that we were using in our various homes. We pray that you would touch the bread and that you would touch the juice or the water, which would represent the blood, realizing that these are symbolic reminders that you have given yourself as a literal sacrifice for us. We love you, we thank you, and give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. I want to remind you that as we take the Lord's Supper for the fifth time this year in 2020, that the Apostle Paul says that as often as we do it, we show forth the Lord's death until he comes. And so this is our reminder that Jesus Christ is the center of our church and the center of our lives. Apostle Paul says, whoever also eateth this bread and drinks this blood unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. And very often I remind you that uh, we need to have a clear un concept of what unworthy means. In Paul's context, people were coming to the Lord's Supper, eating the bread and drinking the wine to be full, and not knowing that it's representative of Jesus' body and his blood. And so what makes us unworthy is not sin, but what makes us unworthy is that when we don't understand. But if you understand that Jesus gave his body and gave his blood even though there may be sin present the lord's supper is like a shot of penicillin to the sin sick soul so at this time we take the bread the bible reminds us that when jesus gathered his disciples together to observe the last passover feast that he took bread and broke it gave it to him said take and eat this represents my body which is broken for you let us now take and eat it Likewise, he took the cup of the fruit of the vine and gave it, which represents his shed blood for the remission of our sins. Let us now take it and drink it. We say hallelujah for his body and hallelujah for his blood. We are so grateful to Jesus and to all he means to us. Let's give God the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Just as we are preparing to go, I want to remind you again uh, that we have two giving options for you. The first is uh, through Givelify. There's a link there in the description. If you want to give your tithes and your offerings as we start this new month of May, we ask that you would please do so uh, this day. If you would like to mail in your tithe and offering, uh, you can send it to 
Friendship Baptist Church, Attend Ten Trustee Ministry, PO Box 6422, Hamden, Connecticut, 06517. Again, that's Friendship Baptist Church, Attend Ten Trustee Ministry, PO Box 6422, Hamden, Connecticut, 06517. All right, just before we go, we want to sing a selection with you. I want you to go and get your tambourine. Amen. Put on some shoes that can click the floor so you can make some noise when you stomp your feet. Amen. Because God has brought all of us a mighty long way. So we want to sing today about our testimony. Hallelujah. We have a testimony today. Thank you. 
Tuesday night prayer on the prayer line, Wednesday night Bible study here on Facebook and on YouTube. This message will be, if you caught it in the middle, it will be posted so that you can see it from the beginning on Facebook and it will be posted this afternoon to YouTube. God bless you and have a blessed, blessed day in the Lord. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest and abide with us henceforth now forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Fight through depression. God's got more in store for you.